Hey, welcome, welcome everybody into this edition of One with the Hive as I am Joe joined by Andrew tonight as our Sixers are now down two games to nothing in the series to the Celtics after two not so lovely showings, especially in this one. Good first quarter, then nothing. Uh, so, Andrew, uh, how you doing today? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a question, isn't it? Um pretty bad honestly i mean we'll get into here but i I don't i woke up today expecting to watch a phillies game a sixers game and a flyers game i guess the phillies gave me a game the sixers gave me something to watch them kind of try i guess you want to call it and then the flyers in a battle right now with a lot of heart but we'll, we'll see what happens yeah i agree um, but what do you think? I mean, it's kind of hard to put anything on this team's label for what makes them just forget what's going on. Uh, but what do you think threw them off their rail? It was when they got going and Bede was hot as a firecracker. Richardson made a couple shots in the beginning there. It looked good for about the first, I would say, 10 minutes and some change. And then after that, the Celtics started getting some inroads and then – in the whole second quarter, they really started taking over. So what do you think contributed to that, if you can even put your finger on it? Because it happens with this team so much, it's pretty hard to actually figure out what it is. Well, that's the problem. You mentioned it's hard to figure out. The reason why it's hard to figure out is because there's so many problems. I mean, you can pinpoint the 10 different things from game to game, whether it's a consistent issue, whether it's not a consistent issue. Um, and there's just there's plenty of issues with this team right now. And, and honestly, it, it's a shame you got to call it out here. Uh, but I think it, it starts with preparation. One, I don't think whether it's the preparation isn't there, obviously, or definitely, but from whether it's coaching, whether it's just personal player preparation, they're not ready for their matchups. It's quite clear about. Uh, and we'll get I'll get into the de- defense here in a little bit, but I think that's lacking. The effort's lacking, um, which is definitely the most of shame because obviously we all know the, the saying, if you're not better than the other guy, I mean, you can beat him in effort. That, that's the thing you can control. And this team showed no effort. They showed no heart tonight. Um, I, I mean, like you said, they come out to a fast start. You saw it all turning and crumbling at the end of the first quarter. The Celtics got on that run to bring it within six. Um, the, the Sixers fought a little bit in the second quarter, and then it went to crumbles. And, and after halftime, I mean, I don't think the Sixers showed any effort at all, if I'm being honest. I, I mean, that was just an embarrassment <clears throat> to uh, call it, call it the least. Um, but that now that was it was it was pathetic tonight, and it, it's a shame because even with that beats 34, I can't even sit here and say he had a good game because he just didn't show the effort tonight. In yeah. Yeah, at the beginning of the game, it looked like we were going to be talking about how Embiid said after the next game, I got to be better. I have to carry this team. It looked like that at the beginning of the game. And then at the second half, he's probably going to say something similar, I would imagine, because he wasn't able to carry the team over the hump in the back half of the game again. So that's something I'm sure he got questions on. I didn't really pay as much attention since the Flyers were on and stuff after the post game today especially after two losses like that. So um, I do want to watch Sixers Outsiders, though, because Tyrone said he was going to wear something interesting. So I have that recorded for people that want to check that out because he said he's not wearing a normal T-shirt. And somebody responded, so you wearing a trash bag or something like that? Yeah, let me know what he wears because I, I, didn't, I didn't record it or anything. I'm sure a picture will leak somewhere, but you're going to have to let me know what he wore. Yeah, that's probably going to be pretty funny, but – we didn't have any bench uh, contributions today. Uh, NATO is Raul NATO. Uh, Alec Burks didn't do anything, so he had to get less minutes than usual. Uh, I mean, he still got 16 oh, minutes, but he can, didn't can I, stop you, can I stop you real quick? Yeah. What? I'll tell you why Alec Burks struggled and why he didn't get many minutes tonight. It's because of the coach, Brett Brown. I don't know. I don't know what he was doing. This guy's been on fire since the restart, and the first guy off the bench, and then he doesn't play until halfway through the second quarter. Like that's inexcusable. Like I don't understand. I don't understand any. I don't understand any of that. Like this guy's been drop. Like this guy's been dropping fifteen to twenty five points a game since the restart, and you're gonna have him be like that third or fourth guy off the bench halfway through the second quarter. Like I don't know how you can explain that. Can you? I don't know if you if you, yeah. you can think of anything. 
But, like, this guy's been your hottest play off the bench. He's been your best play off the bench. He's better than Al Horford right now off the bench. And you're going to have Horford, Raul Nito come off the bench before him? Like, I don't know. Can anyone make sense of that? Like, well, any Horford, even do that? Horford is a different position. So if he came off the bench beforehand, that's for down low play rather than guard play. But Nato doesn't make any sense um, at all because Raul Nato, like I said, is all he he's what you see every day. Um, he's just a player that is what he is or give a little bit of effort. He's not the most athletic guy out there, um, but he has to rely on giving that 110 percent because he's not really the best overall uh, player or anything out there. But uh, I mean, yeah, our bench, uh, str- Corkman struggled um, again, other than foul shooting. That's where he had uh, all three of his points. Um, so, I mean, you need to have depth play, and I think that was a concern for us coming in probably to the playoff, looking at this uh, team, especially after Simmons got injured, now having Milton have to start. You have Thibel starting at um, oh, now for defense, and you really don't have the depth play. Robinson's also hasn't been in, so that is a huge effect. Um, I think if you need some more scoring off the bench, it is the postseason, but you're down to nothing. I know Zach and I have talked about it time and time again. I think this team's stupid for not using them much yet, especially in the restart. But Shayok should, should have played some in the restart more than he I, – I don't even know if he played at all in the restart. Did he play at all? I played a little garbage minutes in the uh, eight games. Uh, he got time, I think, uh, against that Rockets game and stuff like that, but not – he hasn't played any, any meaningful minutes. Okay, so he, no. he, he won't play any meaningful minutes in this restart. Um, I, 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 I don't think he, at this point, would be an answer, not having played anything meaningful. I don't – I mean, listen, I know we're in desperation mode now, so it's not going to hurt to try it, but he's going to be a liability on the defensive end. You already have enough of that right now. I don't – I don't know if he'll help this team at all as well. right now. I, I love his future. I think he can be pretty good, but I don't know if he'd add anything for this series. Well, I think that's because just like this, we've done with other guys, they screwed him over. He should have been playing more in the first place. They don't have that good of a bench. He should have been up more in the first place this year. He's a guy I always thought should have played more this year. The Sixers bench sucks. Even when they got Robinson and Burks, they were better in the restart. Burks was not good until the restart. He's been really good now, but he wasn't good when we got him. Uh, so these three months have done wonders for him because he was trash when we traded for him. So you should have had Shayok up during that time when our bench was doing bad. I don't care that you traded for people. It doesn't matter. You're trying to win games. This team doesn't know how to win games because they don't put the right people in the right situations. Well, and I'll tell you what, what the other issue is. that This ro- roster was constructed very poorly. And, and this goes from Joshua Harris to Brett Brown to Elton Brand. I mean, we all saw it coming from from the start of this playoffs. I mean, instead of re-signing Jimmy Butler or J.J. Redick, players you actually need, guys that actually fit your roster, fit your system, fit this uh, scheme to give MB guys to, to pass the ball to, you, you sign Al Horford to a max contract? Really? What, to clog the yeah. lane? You already saw how that worked out very poorly when we had Okafor with Sean Holmes playing with Embiid. It's not a good mix. The, the mix is terrible. Like, I don't know what, what they saw in that. Uh, and obviously what they saw in it, in it was what the Eagles saw in DeMarco Murray, signing him from the Cowboys. You thought you'd steal a good player from a rival, and, and he'd come in here and help you that sense. But they built, the, they built this team to beat one team in the playoffs, and you're not going to face that team in the playoffs if you don't get there. And that's what you're going to see here. They they built this team to beat the Bucks, but you're not going to play the Bucks until the Eastern Conference Finals, and, and obviously right now I don't think any of us think that's going to even come close to happening. Um, but no, I, again, th- this goes to everything. I, I mean, the one thing we had coming into the series and the advantage we had is what height, aggressiveness. Guess guess who got out rebounded today? The Sixers did. Like it's yeah. another non. It's not excusable. I mean. That's the advantage you're supposed to have in the series, and you come out and do nothing. You continue not to be able to come around off a pick and roll, pick a, a screener at whatever, and, and guard that. Yeah, it was 43 to 39, the total rebounds of the game. 
um, according to scores, um, stack cast thing. That's what but, I have as well. Yeah. So the they also had three more offensive rebounds, which are obviously very um, key for getting put back points. I mean, I yeah, I just think aggressive is probably the right way to put it. The Sixers showed very little aggressiveness other than in the first quarter for the first about nine to ten minutes, and then showed nothing. But my whole point with getting more guys in earlier was, I mean, yeah, I like it when he makes points, but if Shayok can make points and isn't good at defense – then he's probably a guy, if you got him in more in the regular season, you would have said, well, Ferg, you're not doing crap tonight, and you suck at defense. So you're coming out, and if he starts making baskets, he ain't good at defense either, but he's scoring. So, like, at least gives you an option there for when Corkman stinks on the night because he's very inconsistent. And then you have Shayok, who will probably be very inconsistent to start play because that's how most guys that – you're developing or when they first come up it's not like they just have consistently usually developing players that are not like first top picks come up and average 25 unless you're like Chris Dunn and you're but um that's why I think he should have been up because you would have allowed more platoon play with Corkmans because Corkmans is kind of a young J.R. Smith you're going to get a game where he goes off and then you're going to get a game where he's just obsolete and probably just shouldn't play more than 10 minutes where in those games, Shayok might be able to play those other 10, 5 to 10 minutes. He might be able to make a couple threes. He's a guy that's a scorer. Glenn Robinson's not the best three-point shooter. He's more of just a shooter. He had his best three-point stats this year, so you banked on that. And then he got injured, so that was unfortunate. And then Burks is also more of an overall scorer who's had very good three-point stats this year. And then you mismanaged him So in this game. So... The Sixers either mismanage people or they just don't use them. And that's uh, what annoys me. We talked about them on using, not using Kyle O'Quinn either. Um, in the past, when he's had good games, he hasn't been used. Uh, bef- and Norvell Pell has been used over him. That honestly reminds me of when the Flyers use And I'm not trying to. Like, Norvell Pell might develop into something. But right now, that reminds me of when the Flyers just kept using Brandon Manning. It's like, what the hell is this guy in the lineup for? He doesn't do anything. Like, like, you should put a veteran in that at least brings you something. And I just think Brett Brown, like, it's, it looks like he almost at this point, especially towards the end of the, because I had them recorded and I rewatched some of them, Dorte and the play, and, like, we were almost just cruising out there. It almost seems like he doesn't care. And with that attitude, he's definitely going to be fired after this, especially if we get swept. I mean, I don't think there's a doubt. Uh, <laughs> if if we can't turn this around and we don't get past the first round, he's gone. There, there's no way you can justify bringing him back with or without, obviously, Ben Simmons now. But, it, I mean, um, without question, you can't bring him back. If you lose first round, you're, you're done. Especially with the – you can't even blame it with, oh, we played well with Simmons and then got bounced in the first round. No, we're the sixth seed with Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons played all year, basically, outside, obviously, the last – what was it, five or six games before the bubble or before – uh, the suspension, but they, they were going to be the six. They were going to be a five C at best eh, with Simmons all year. And th- th- this goes to show it uh, again. If Ben Simmons pl- was playing, do I think it would be different? Yes. I think it could be different. You'd have someone to actually guard Jason Tatum. Cause obviously the defense has been horrendous. Um, playing so far off. Everybody can't come off a pick or anything like that. I mean, they got a long way to go. I mean, obviously, Obviously, anything can happen in the series. You can come out here and take the next two and even things up, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But, I, I mean, if you continue to play like this, it, you got no shot if you play like this. And same thing with the turnovers. The turnovers are just ridiculous. You have nine today, which isn't that bad, but Monday night was horrendous as well. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look like anyone knew how to throw a ball, pass a basketball inside down low or anything. And these guys are supposed to be professional players, and they're they're playing like they're – back in high school or even work less than that. Um, a very disappointing game, effort, everything from this team. Um, again, I think it's time to call out everyone from Joshua Harris to Elton Brand to Brett Brown and then to all the players. I mean, you, you got to put out a better, better effort than that. Very disappointing. You, yeah, you also can't use the Simmons jargon in this one because the guy that probably played the best, I guess if you want to say stat-friendly game, uh, to people is Milton uh, in this game 
need to not play the best of the eye test all the time, but if you if you're if someone goes on Twitter and just looks at the stats, they're going to say the Sixers' most consistent player in this game was Milton because five of eight, two of five from three, four assists, three rebounds, and fourteen points. Sure, he didn't look smooth the whole time he was out there, but stats wise. He's the one that I would say probably looks the prettiest on the night on the Sixers side of things. Yeah, he shot well tonight. He shot well the other day. Obviously, he's a little bit of a liability on defense, but it's something you should be able to overcome. Um, and my last thing is you, you can't make any excuses for it either because Celtics now lost Gordon Hayward. Yes, I know Ben Simmons is better than Gordon Hayward, but Gordon Hayward is a huge loss for the Celtics, a guy averaging 18 points a game. The Celtics aren't that deep of a team. They should have taken advantage of that tonight, and they didn't. And my last point before we kind of wrap it up here, is you you came out and attacked, which was very well to start this game. Had Jason Tatum have two fouls in the first four minutes of that game. You know how many fouls he had the rest of the game? Zero. You, you, yeah, I was going to say one. I didn't know if he got you, one. But... You forced Tatum out of the game early because of foul trouble, and then he didn't go back after him. You didn't attack him anymore after that. Like, well, what are we doing? Like, that, that's fundamental basketball. that You're not playing. Yeah, it's poor. It's poor game planning. I completely agree with that. But I, I, okay, I would say game planning because you came out well. I, it's adjustments because the game plan poor, was good. Okay, it's poor the game, game plan was good. You, you attacked him, got him in foul trouble, but they made the adjustments, and Brett Brown didn't do anything in the adjustments. Okay, it's poor in game planning. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I agree with that. Oh, um, um, but I, I'll save the rest of it for if, if we lose the series <laughs> <laughs> or next game. Uh, but. <laughs> But, um, yeah, this has been our one with the hive. If you like what you're hearing, everybody, on everything we do, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast as well. Hopefully our Sixers can get a win next game and bounce back here and play more than 10 minutes of a basketball game. Um, for Andrew, I am Joe. You can find him at AJ underscore Santangelo and on steelflyers.com. And you can find me on there as well as JJ Boric 26 on Twitter and true underscore Philly sport for the podcast. Have a great, safe and pleasant night, everybody. This is one with the hive. Peace out.